Two. Welcome to the Fishbowl Radio, everybody. My name is Chief here, and as always, is Ju- how you doing today, Juicy? I'm good, man. Just making it. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, man. Every day, something new. Um, this here, um, we have some sad news to report. I mean, it's not breaking news or anything like that. Uh, NBA. No. Point, no. no uh, NBA legend Kobe. Ben- passed away yesterday um, due to a helicopter crash in California. Do you see the reaction whenever you heard that Kobe Bryant was killed yet? Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. I, I didn't want to comment or mention or tag or share nothing because I want to I, I just let it be. I don't want to hear more. I make sure what but, uh, I was I was in the Everybody else was going public with it then that's when I realized it's uh it's sad and the worst part is his daughter was uh his 13 year old daughter was like with her, which is even much more tragic than just him I think a lot of a lot of people were actually upset with TMZ for reporting the news first from what I heard uh that his wife didn't even know about the accident until she had to read it on TMZ about her husband being killed. Yeah, it's really sad and sick that TMZ has to hurry up and do that, do that uh, and for his wife to find, to find out that, that, that way. Yeah, um, I was, I posted the TMZ article uh, when I first heard it, but I was, I put in the caption above on our fishbowl radio page that sometimes TMZ does jump the gun on stuff. I'm like, because, and they'll miss it. And I was like, I don't know if this is true, but I've seen other news stations across the country start posting this. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm not sure. If this comes out to be wrong, I'm just saying, look, take this for a grain of salt, wherever you want with it. Because I was waiting on national news to come out with it like ABC, NBC and CBS because they're more how you say accurate with their uh, they're able to get some information. I've seen these guys work out in the field before and they do they get to the bottom of that thing as quick as they possibly can. They say and it's uh it was just bad weather that the foggy the weather was falling so bad that the that the sheriff's office had to ground their choppers. Yeah they, um, I had posted some uh, radio communication between the tower and the uh, helicopter that Kobe Bryant was on, his daughter, and the other nine people that unfortunately perished in that accident. And it's an yeah. interesting one. If y'all get a chance to go look at that, we got that on our Facebook page. They get link to YouTube, and they got a YouTube video. It shows like a little it's a helicopter and everything else about that. So. Such a tragic ending to such a uh, how could you say? I guess to such a somebody we we, we all grew up watching and knew and watched him throughout his whole career. We all, I mean, that's where we all get our little Kobe thing from. Whenever we whenever we throw something, try to make it in a trash can or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, some other big news that we have. Coming up, this kind of came out a couple of days ago. Uh, it wasn't confirmed until like two days ago. The New Orleans Saints uh, have they issued a statement that reports that their team's public relations staff assisted the Archdiocese of New Orleans in a sex abuse scandal. Um, they tried to block the release of emails, nearly 300 emails between members of the the Saints' PR staff and the communications in the communications department. Um, they they were trying to release these emails. I don't know what's exactly in them emails that would want them to even. First off, if you're a part of Saint, Saints' PR staff, why are you even getting involved in this kind of stuff? Is what I'm trying to figure out. You need to stay out, stay out of it completely. Like. Trying to nudge their nose in on. But here's what this. Okay, let's see. Um, 
Dr. Diocese declined to comment on the issue. The Saints released a statement confirming that Greg Bensel, the Senior Vice President of Communication for the New Orleans Saints, did in fact assist the Archdiocese with messaging before the Archdiocese released a list of clergy who have been credibly, ac credibly accused of the sexual abuse of children. Okay, here's what the um, release says. While there is current litigation relative to the New Orleans Archdiocese and clergy sex abuse, our comments are limited only to the scope of our involvement. The New Orleans Saints organization has always had a strong relationship with the Archdiocese. The Archdiocese reached out to a number of community and civic-minded leaders seeking counsel on handling the pending media attention that would come the, with the release of the clergy names in November of 2018. Greg Bensel, Senior Vice President of Communications for the New Orleans Saints, was contacted and offered input on how to work with the media. The advice was simple and never wavering, be direct, open, and fully transparent, while making sure all, that all that all law enforcement agencies were alerted. The New Orleans Saints, Greg Bensel, and Miguel Benson were remain offended, disappointed, repulsed by the actions of certain past clergy. Remain steadfast in support of the victims who have suffered and pray for their continued healing. So that was part of the release there. Um, so after me reading that statement to you, do you see what you think about it? Well, I'm with you. They shouldn't have been involved, but they definitely kind of not uh, helping their case out anymore, saying that, well, they have a strong relationship with the archdiocese, and they're the ones that are under the gun for investigation. You don't want to kind of, you kind of don't want to, it wasn't smart to say, let's just put it like that. But it's not, uh, it's really a sad story. I mean, I haven't read up on all, on all the stuff going on yet, but it's not, uh, as a Saints fan, it makes me, like, disappointed to even want to be involved, to even, to even be in that conversation. Yeah, as an NFL team. Because... Because you, uh, how they how they say that social justice, the social justice is gonna always side with speculation. The statement did go on to say that the Saints had no interest in concealing information from the press or public, but that that close relationship. I was wondering what was in them emails. If you're demanding like nearly three hundred emails were between the members of the PR staff and the communication department of the archdiocese. And they became a fact about two dozen men claiming abuse at the hands of the clergy, according mm -hmm. to the AP report. Um, but you're one. You have to wonder if why are they going so? They're going to quickly block the release of these emails. What was in those emails that you were trying to, you know, keep away from the public? If they say they're not trying to conceal them, then why do you have to try so hard to block? Them? Yeah, they're no concealing have no interest in concealing information from the press or the public. Lawyers for the organization are mer merely requesting the court to apply the normal rules of civil discovery to the documents the Saints produce and deliver to Mr. Doe's counsel. The NFL has yet to issue a statement on the team's connection to the Archdiocese and the clergy's sex scandal. Believe me, I am I am 100% Saints fan, but I'm also 100% real, too, whether... I'm, I'll, I'll be very fair in judgment on the Saints and whatever on how I feel about it. So let's just clear that up. <laughs> but I was wondering why, if you're the Saints, why would what would be your? I know you have like let's say you would try to help out your friend as much as you possibly can in certain situations. I'm guessing that's what their point was. They were trying to do, but man, it'd that, that's be one some... thing to me. It'd be one thing if it was like. Well, what makes it worse is that it's a whole, like, well, that it's an NFL organization, and, you know, and you know how, you know how high-profile stuff, like, blows up, like, really fast, and people come up with these wild ideas, and it, it's a, it, it's a dark cloud, let's just say that. Like, like I said, there's not a lot of information out there right now. There, there's kind, it's kind of been... I don't know, like, people, I don't think people are paying attention to, to that like they should be. I've, this is a big deal, because... This could blow up into something huge. Yeah, we're just trying to document it right now, because it needs to be out there, and it needs to be discussed, but 
I'm wonder once they release them emails about it because if if you know if it rules in the court, I feel like something of that nature that could have an impact. I, maybe they were just trying to give advice to the archdiocese. I have no idea what they would do, but for an NFL organization, I feel like you got to pick and choose your battles better than that because that seems really irresponsible to even get yourself in this situation because this is a th- this whole thing is a sex abuse what it is is sexual abuse but like the catholic church has a long history of it between you know priests and <laughs> children it's a long thing but man like this could really be very bad for the Saints. Um, people could lose their jobs over this if something comes out to where they put something in those emails. That the whole office could be shut off. Yeah. It's just something that you don't need to put yourself in. Like, if if they reached out to you and you said, and they, they said, look, we need some help. How do we, like, this is what this whole thing's about. Like, like what the Saints were saying was, they, they look like they were reached out um, and they were like, look, we need some help. How do we address the media and the public with this? We need some help. If I was the Saints, I'd be like, y'all y'all should have just as much experience dealing with the media as we are. Um, because just tell them, be completely transparent about it. I mean, anybody, like, why would you want to hide something in a sex abuse revelation anyway? I mean to protect yourself, but if you're trying to come up with a list, you better come clean that first time because you may really severely hurt your your other clergy members that come to your church and support your church. You might lose all that support, and they might go to another church. You're not the only one that's even getting like support like that. Exactly. <laughs> so, like I say, that I think that was a really dumb move. Whoever thought of the idea was to even help out the thing because now you're drawing yourself attention to unwanted attention to your franchise in other words it didn't need to be done you should have if you were hiding something or emailing you should to me you should just you shouldn't you shouldn't say nothing just pretend like or just don't get involved or just don't tell nobody hey uh well we have a close relationship with them you know just you know you, uh sometimes mom is the best word if nobody asks you or nobody tells don't don't speak to unless you're spoken to. Yeah, it, it kind of makes no no sense to get involved in that because it just hurts your credibility as a franchise. And if exactly. and if something in those emails is really damaging to the Saints, or I don't think there's anything that's really damaging out there in those emails. I don't think there is. If they're just offering advice, but if there is something more than that, which a part of me feels like there kind of is because if you're just offering advice, why not release the emails? Exactly. There oh. should be nothing behind, but Yeah. But there, there's something more there than I think that's what's being released yet. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on this developing story and figure out what's going on. In other news today, Bo Pelini, um, he was basically, I wouldn't say he was hired. He was rehired by LSU as their defensive coordinator. Bo Pelini, if you remember, he was around LSU from 2005 to 2007 under head coach Les Miles. His final season with the team, LSU won the BCS National Championship over Ohio State. He will reportedly have a three-year deal that will pay him around $2.3 million. Uh, Bo Pelini was the head coach at Youngstown State. Um, so, yeah. So, Juicy, what you think about... Uh, well, Bo Pelini really coming back. Probably the only hire that they could have had really to be the equivalent of what they had before to me, or pretty close to it, because I know he's, he's he. They always had a top notch, one of the, at least a top ten in the country every year at defense when he was there, and even when he went to Nebraska when he was the head coach, they, he he turned the defense around over there big time for. Him. Uh, While he was at Nebraska, he. Had a 66 and 27 record over seven seasons. The Cornhuskers made it to six. The Cornhuskers, they won six straight. They won to they went to six straight bowl appearances and they reached the Big Ten championship game in 2012. And he got fired for what 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 I thought was kind of a 
I, I really did, I really thought he was did unfair over there in Nebraska because he won. Wait, he well, averaged about ten wins, a little more than ten wins a year. Yeah. Uh, but over the past five seasons, he's got at Youngstown State to a 33-28 and 28 record. He also worked as an assistant coach in the NFL with the 49ers, Patriots, and the Packers. Bo Pelini said, The opportunity to return to LSU is truly unique. Culturally, with my prior experience at LSU, I know it's a great fit for me. The chance to work with Coach Orgeron, the ability to take charge of the Tigers' defense, is something that I'm extremely excited about. All of that in place that both my family and I immensely enjoy when we were there before is very exciting for us. Well, I I think he's going to do a really good job. I think it's a good hire. I mean, he already has experience being over there. He knows how. Um, I th- he's, 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 he's already been in the SEC before. Yeah, he, he's, I think he had a top three defense each of the three years he was there. Yeah, at least top 10 for sure. Yeah, top 10 for sure. But I know that that Tiger defense in 2007 was really good. It probably, they, 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 and he's got, uh, they still pretty much got the, the same talent, caliber talent now that they had then. Yeah, uh, I mean, they, I mean, I think, I do think it'll be really good. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I've seen Dave Aranda has been trying to pull some LSU staff members his way. At this point, he might take Mike the Tiger with him. At this point, yeah, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's a good staff. Wouldn't you uh, want to get in there too? All right, so we're done talking about coaching news. I'm tired of talking about coaching news is because they keep it keeps always something with coach. It's a, yeah, it's a revolving door. It's always a revolving door. All right, so juicy. Do you think the New Orleans Pelicans will get to the playoffs? They currently. No, they won. Like twelve out of their last eighteen or nineteen games. Yeah. Uh, if they let Zion Williams start playing more, I know they're kind of trying to ease him back into it. But I know when when he's on the court, they a whole di- different team than when he's off the court. So yeah. If uh, they let him play, I think the more they let him play, I think. Let's see. They four games out right now, but they're still about half the season to go. Uh, well, they four games out of the number eight seed. I think there's still time to catch and squeeze into at least that number eight spot. Yeah, but they got to beat the. When you to play more. The teams in front of them right now that are nine, tenth, and eleventh. You got to pass them up where you can get there. Two games back from the Spurs for ninth mm-hmm. position, but that's not going to get be enough because the top eight teams in the Western Conference get in there. But the Western Conference is always a rough conference to even win in. Anyway, um, Lakers are the yeah, Lakers are thirty six and ten on the year. They won seventy eight percent of their games. So the last ten, the Pelicans are six and four, while the Grizzlies are eight and two. Uh, the Lakers are seven and three. The Utah Jazz are nine and one. They're the number two seed right now. Los Angeles Clippers, Clippers, their last ten, they're eight and two. Denver Lakers seven and three. So you have to get someone that's losing a lot of games right now. The Rockets are four and six right now. Uh, like I said, they have so they've only gained one game on the Spurs, the Trailblazers, and the Phoenix Suns, who are above them right now. Still a lot of games to play. Yeah, it's still half of the season. Uh, I think they're gonna get. I I I'm okay with them kind of like just putting Zion in there a little bit to kind of get him back healthy completely. Then I think they'll make a push. But you got to time this right though. You can't wait too long. His teams can get hot. I mean, in the NBA, teams can go on a wild win streak. And Just start winning games left and right. But I mean, if you... Who knows? New could catch fire when they play almost a whole game, and they can win eight, yeah. nine, ten games in a row. Yeah, you never know how that's all going to go. All right. Uh, switching gears to the lower level, but uh, like in the Sun Belt Conference, Louisiana Raging Cajuns. They beat ULM uh, this past weekend. They're three and seven in conference. It's gonna be a tough one though for them to get into conf to. Ouch! Yeah, I know yeah. that three and seven record. Yeah. Um. They take the eight, the top eight in the Sun Belt Conference. You got Little Rock, Georgia State, Arkansas State, Georgia Southern, Texas State, App State, UTA, 
in South Alabama as the top eight. They're three games back from South Alabama, but their win was against UL Monroe, who has a two and eight record in conference. So it's not looking too good. The Cajuns are eight and thirteen overall. So uh, a lot of injuries for the Cajuns is during uh, this season. Do you think they can get on a run, Juicy, and maybe get past South Alabama? Man, this is a tough call. Uh, I mean, I want to say with the injuries plaguing them, it's hard. It's hard to really say yes. But if they can get healthy, or like I said, basketball is one of those unpredictable sports. You just you know, the season can turn around so fast. One player can make a difference on the whole team. Uh, I mean, hell, it's a possibility, especially if they're only three games out. It's not like they're completely out of it right now. Now, if they were like six or seven games back, I'd be like, well, that's kind of a tough stretch right there. Yeah, they're only one game back. I mean, it's not. I'm going to give them, I'm gonna give them about a 40% shot to make it right now, which is kind of being generous a little bit. I'm going to go with 50% because I think some of those guys are going to get back within the next two to three weeks couple of those guys and they might it might completely change their team do yeah, I th- you know, one one guy really can make a whole difference yeah I guess we'll see what happens once we get to that point huh yep it's gonna be crunch time here in the next few weeks well uh, we're gonna go down the road a little bit about an hour east in Baton Rouge LSU's men's basketball team climbs back into the top 25 with an eight-game winning streak. Um, yeah, with the Baton Rouge going, going in the opposite direction from Lafayette. Yeah. One team's on the up and one team's on the down. LSU, which put together an eight-game eight winning streak since a 74 start, recorded two-point wins at home against Florida and at Texas this past week and came in at number 22 in the national pool of 64 riders and broadcasters. Uh, 261 Houston and number 23 Wichita State. Winners are 15 and 4 overall and lead the Southeast Conference with a 6 and 0 mark. One game, Kentucky, going to home games this week against Alabama on Wednesday and Ole Miss on Saturday. LSU has been out in the AP rankings since November 18th, five days after 84 82 TCU in the second game of the season. The defense C regular season champion Tigers ranked 23 in the November, 23rd and November 11th poll. After coming in 22nd in the preseason. So, Juicy, you think that this uh, LSU basketball team is going to be able to uh, keep it up? Well, they're still going to play Auburn and Kentucky. Uh, I mean, I know they got, and they got to play Auburn twice, I think, still. Kentucky once for sure. Uh, I guess time will tell. I know, I noticed how LSU's, I guess, uh, it's frustrating to watch them sometimes because they always get these big, big leads in the first half, and then it seems like the second half they kind of just try to ride it out and coast it out and just do enough to get by and win the game. And I get, but I guess that's how Will Wade's philosophy is. I don't know, but can they keep it up? I mean, I hope so. Unless the injury bug really starts to plague them, I mean, I can see them at least winning the next two games with. Uh, Alabama and Ole Miss are both definitely winnable games. Uh, how long can it go is really tough to say. Uh, they still got like nine or ten conference games left to play at least. But if I had to base off of right now, I mean, hey, what? I guess what's going to stop them? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, you got uh, Javante Smart and all them. They they going all crazy scoring points right now. But So you're saying the only thing that can stop them is themselves? Pretty much, yeah. The only team that I mean, but I guess that's every team. The only team that can stop anybody is themselves pretty much. So I guess we'll see how uh L S U does in the the rest of the regular season. I know for sure they'll make the SEC tournament though. Yeah, that seems like a safe bet here. Um not a lot of season left in college basketball. We got March basically just around the corner. And, you know, that's when the NCAA tournament starts. And it's going to be a fun one. Uh, I guess, uh, Juicy, we'll make some brackets again this year, ain't we? Yeah, I'm sure we'll make some brackets. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll try for that perfect one billion dollar bracket. Yeah, like, <laughs> try to think of. Pro, you know, pay off all, pay off everything, man. Go get some brand new Lamborghinis to go drive around, right? No, my, my luck, I'm probably gonna get the perfect bracket, get a billion dollars, and the next day I'm probably gonna die or something in like forty years, fifty years from now. Dang, that'd be rough. I know that'd be my luck, though. Yeah. All right. Well, um. Thank y'all for tuning to the Fishbowl Radio uh, here today. Um, thank you, Juicy, for uh, joining us here today. We appreciate it. Oh, uh, no problem, buddy. I'm always here anytime. All right. Um, anything else you want to add before we sign off, Juicy? No, I just want to say good night, Fishbowl, and hope to uh, hope to have y'all back again next week. All right. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I do plan on doing something. I would say like a uh, a little special broadcast on the Fishbowl Radio. I've been wanting to do this for a couple of weeks, but I've been trying to figure out how to actually like write this thing out and give like a 30-minute like broadcast on like some specific issues that's been going on around the world of sports. And uh, one of them I've been I'm gonna probably do it on Saturday, or I might push it back to next week. Is like. I've talked to this with Juicy before, too. Um, college football's attendance problem at the smaller schools. Why you can't get bigger um, schools to even, like, I mean, like, like bigger attendance at these smaller schools that you would in the past. Like, uh, if you look at 2011's attendance for the Louisiana Raging Cajuns and what it was this past season, this past season was more of a success then the 2011 season, they won more games, and they went to a bowl game. They even went to the Sun Belt Conference Championship game. Why can't they feel Cajun feel like they did back in 2011? I'm gonna go deep into those issues right here on the Fishbowl Radio. Hope y'all tune into it. It should be a really good broadcast, a uh, good podcast, as I should say. Uh, Juicy, what you think about that? I'd like to do that. We could probably spend a whole show talking. About- yeah, we're going to go deep deeper into it. Uh, so, um, I'm going to try to do it probably sometime in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see how it goes from there. But uh, for this podcast, I'm going to sign off right now. Thank you all for all tuning in and listening to us uh, each and every week. The reason why we do this. Um, so, just for you guys. Just for y'all guys, Fishbowl Nation. Thank you and have a great night. <laughs>